Ah, the Nintendo DS, the best-selling handheld console of all time. It had great games, tons of players, and it introduced a whole new way to play video games. The DS was everywhere you looked, and it changed what it meant to be a handheld console. It took the world by storm when it came out, and it felt like nothing could stop it. But eventually, the sales started to dwindle, and when the DS finally came to die, Nintendo moved on, and the DS would be the last of its kind, and nothing would ever be even remotely similar to it. So Nintendo was hard at work in the lab trying to make the perfect heir to the throne. It had to be similar to the DS, but not too similar. And what they eventually came up with was, uh, this. The Nintendo 3DS. It seemed just like the DS, but it had a 3D screen? Okay, so maybe Nintendo was gonna have another failure. I mean, seriously, who's gonna buy a DS that just has 3D graphics? But somehow, this would be a massive success. After the 3DS, Nintendo stood as the unmatched champion of the handheld market, and it's held that position ever since. But how? How could this weak, tiny device that's only feature is 3D become a wild success? Well, that's not entirely true. The 3DS did have a lot of features, but what they decided upon to be the system's main selling point was something that they had already experimented with many times before. Stereoscopic 3D. Now, why would they choose something that had already failed for them? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure. But they advertised this feature, and they advertised hard. 3D graphics without wearing glasses? Now that's just something you had to see. But this wasn't supposed to be just a screen with 3D pictures. It was a whole gaming console. You can't just expect people to buy it for that, especially when you're charging $170 for it. Oh wait, it was actually $250 when it came out. Well, no surprises, the 3DS did terribly when it first released. And only three months after it came out, Nintendo slashed the price by 30%. What it did release with, though, was a ton of new features. It kept the same menu style as a DS Lite, but it had a ton of more features and apps built into it. And one of these was Street Pass. Basically, this was something in the 3DS that could receive data from other nearby 3DS systems. So, if you're walking down the street with a 3DS in your pocket and you walk by someone else with one, you can see their Miis and you can send messages to them. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this is kind of useless for a gaming console. But what it did do was build a sense of community around it. As you met people, you could see what they had been playing. And that was pretty cool. Not to mention, you could collect prizes from doing so. It felt like Nintendo was encouraging you to get out there with their 3DS into the real world. But not only was this just a silly little gimmick for the console, it was also a great form of advertisement. As more and more people brought their 3DSs in public, it showed other people what the system was all about. Nintendo used their fans to advertise their very own console in the wild. But this wasn't the only app baked into the console. Taking inspiration from the Wii and DS Lite, the eShop showed up once again in the menu. And this was incredibly important for the 3DS. It allowed for a huge amount of indie games and even smaller first-party games to get a ton of attention. And even if the games weren't exclusively digital, they still received a huge influx of sales due to the eShop. Some of the other notable classics on the 3DS were... The Mii Maker, which made its return from the Wii. Face Raiders, which showed how the camera and 3D graphics could be used. And of course, Dinosaur Office. After the price cut of the 3DS, sales eventually started to climb. In fact, by Christmas of 2011, it reached 15 million units sold. Not bad. But that's not the only thing that happened in 2011 for Nintendo. They also had just announced their brand new home console, the Wii U. Of course, Nintendo had been balancing their home and handheld markets for decades, so it was no surprise that a new home console would be coming soon. But what was surprising was how badly advertised it was. For reasons I have already discussed at length, the Wii U was a disaster for Nintendo. So they shifted their focus from the Wii U's dumpster fire to the 3DS, which was doing much better. But considering the fact that the 3DS made so many of the same mistakes as the Wii U, it really never should have succeeded. Both of them copied the designs of their money-making predecessors, but just added a confusing name and gimmick to it. And only one of these ended up doing well. But why? 
Well, the market for the 3DS, and the DS for that matter, has a much wider appeal than that of home consoles. Everyone knows how to play games on their phones or on their tablets, so the switch to another handheld device isn't that crazy, especially at the time. The early 2010s saw the explosion of new smartphones on the market, and of course, this introduced a ton of new handheld games. So, if you're already playing games on your phone, it's not that crazy to think that you might like the games on an actual gaming platform. And speaking of gaming, after the first few years of its life, it had built up quite a respectable library. Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart 7, Animal Crossing New Leaf, Tomodachi Life, and Pokemon X and Y, just to name a few. And these games did quite well, and got pretty good reception. Of course a Mario Kart and Pokemon are almost guaranteed to succeed on handhelds, but a completely new 3D Mario game on handheld had never really been done before. Sure, the DS had a remake of Mario 64, but this game was new, and even though it's considered to be one of the weakest in its series, it's still pretty novel to have a proper 3D Mario game on a handheld. Tomodachi Life was a completely new series. Kinda. It uses the Miis, which had been in many games before, but it creates a new experience as a kind of goofy life sim game, and unlike its counterparts on the Wii, it's not a sports or music game. It's a more chill, slow-paced game, perfect for a handheld. Now, at the same time these games were getting more and more successful, the Wii U was, well, trying. But it was flopping and flopping hard. And the 3DS was pretty much keeping the company afloat at the time. You can even see this in its games. Smash came out on both consoles for the first time, and games like Mario Maker, Yoshi's Woolly World, and even Captain Toad were all ported to the 3DS in hopes that they would sell better. And the console just felt like it was getting more and more attention as the Wii U continued to decline. But there wasn't just one 3DS anymore. No, much like the DS, the 3DS got a ton of revisions. There's the original, the 3DS XL, the 2DS, the new 3DS, the new 3DS XL, and the 2DS XL. Okay, that's a lot, but why? Well, the 3DS XL was a bigger and better 3DS. It was more expensive and a bit more comfortable for most people, but with a 90% larger screen, this was the definitive version of the console, at least for a time. The 2DS was a flat, 3D-less alternative to the 3DS. It was a bit cheaper, and it was really for people who still wanted to play all the 3DS games, but maybe didn't care about the 3D features or just wanted to spend less money. The new 3DS was a slightly improved version of the original. It had better hardware, new buttons, built-in amiibo support, and an overall different feel to it. That same year, the larger new 3DS XL came out as well. It was more expensive, but it might be the best version of the console. It kept the 3D while introducing better hardware and a big screen. Now, maybe this is where Nintendo should have ended it. But six years after the original's launch, the final version, the new 2DS XL, was released. This was a much cheaper version of the new 3DS XL without the 3D, but it might have been the best deal out of any of the consoles. So with all these different versions of the consoles, it made sure anyone could get the right 3DS for their particular price and comfort needs. But were all of these necessary? Eh, probably not. But they're still nice to have. So, in the meantime, what games were coming out? Well, a lot of Pokemon. Three out of the top five best-selling games on the system were Pokemon, and these games were coming out like every other year. This even got to a point where Nintendo literally released the same game two years later, and it still sold 9 million copies. But despite what it seemed, Pokemon wasn't the only games coming out. Yokai Watch, Luigi's Mansion, Monster Hunter, and Zelda did pretty well too but not as well as the games that came out earlier in the system's life. In fact, only Smash, Pokemon, and weirdly Yokai Watch 2 could break into the top 10 after a while, and it became evident that the 3DS was beginning to decline, especially due to the fact that rumors started to circulate saying that the next Nintendo console would be both a home and handheld console. It looked like the 3DS was going to be replaced. But the system was still doing pretty well. Sure, not as great as its first few years, but it was still kicking. Even after the Switch finally released in 2017, the 3DS was still getting games. In fact, it would still last three more years after the Switch came out. But eventually, the 3DS was finally discontinued in September of 2020. However, it didn't go down without a fight. Over its nine years on the market, it amassed 75 million sales, becoming the sixth best-selling handheld console ever made. 
and even though it never reached the same level of success as its predecessor, its impacts can still be felt today. The 3DS's main competition, the PS Vita, received immensely less sales than it, despite having significantly better hardware. Now, was this directly due to the 3DS? Maybe, maybe not. But the fact is that Nintendo is now really the only one making handhelds. Yeah, there's the Steam Deck and some other lesser known ones, but they pale in comparison to the Switch's sales. And for that reason, I believe the 3DS was the real winner of the handheld wars, clearing the path for Nintendo consoles to become the most successful ever made. And for that reason, the 3DS is one of the most important consoles of all time. Thanks for watching, see you later.